Today, I'm going to talk about people pleasing, what it is and how to break the habit. So what is people pleasing? People pleasing is when we do something for someone else that usually causes us to betray ourselves. We end up doing this a lot of the times because we think that in pleasing someone else, we're keeping ourselves safe or maybe we're controlling how the person views us. We might fear disconnection. We might feel like we're walking on eggshells to avoid an explosion. So we end up pleasing in order to keep connection or to avoid that explosive behavior. And because a lot of us grew up in homes where we didn't have boundaries, where we couldn't say no, or where we had to be an adult or parent or siblings or the adults around us at such a young age, that it makes sense that we end up developing a pattern of people pleasing as a result. And a lot of people want to know what is the difference between people pleasing and just being a kind, good person. The difference is when you're being kind and you make the choice to do something, whatever it is, you usually end up, you feel good. You're doing something because you want to support the other person. You want to be there for the other person. You want to help out. On the other hand, when you're doing something to please the other person, you usually end up not feeling good. You usually end up feeling resentful. You might even feel like you're being taken advantage of, or maybe the entire relationship is unequal. And very understandably, you end up feeling exhausted because you're in this cycle of tending to someone else's needs before your own. You usually end up acting or doing something to get something back from someone else or to avoid a behavior of someone else. You're not doing it because you want to. So you don't end up feeling good or like a kind person at all. So here's an example. Say a person comes to you with a need or with a request, whatever it might be. You might notice that your knee jerk reaction before you even think about it, you hear yourself immediately saying yes, at the same time, ignoring your needs. You end up then feeling maybe immediately or somewhere down the line, you feel regretful, you feel angry, you might even shame yourself. Why did I say yes to doing this thing that I don't really want? to do. And so the cycle continues. You're feeling shameful. You're feeling regretful. Maybe the same person, maybe another person comes to you with another request, right? To think you're being a good person, you swoop in, you do the thing that you don't want to do in a knee jerk reaction. And then before you know it, you're feeling that same shame again, all of the while, none of your needs are getting met. So you can see with this cycle of people pleasing, it has truly become a habit We're near immediately saying yes before we even pause to check in and see how we really feel, if we're even available to say yes or to do the thing. Someone who isn't a people pleaser, for instance, might when asked for a request, maybe a friend is coming to you and saying, hey, you know, can you watch my dog next weekend? Someone who isn't a people pleaser might take a moment, might pause, might check in with their own schedule, might see if they have the time, the space, and the energy to actually say yes to that request. And if they don't, for whatever reason, they are able to deliver that I can't do this for you right now, though maybe I can help you find someone else to watch the pet sitter. Or maybe I have someone else that I can offer you. But I've taken the time, not being a people pleaser, to pause to see what's possible and then to deliver the truthful response. So using that example, The difference between a people pleaser and someone who isn't a people pleaser. When you are able to give your honest answers and not just do something to please someone else, you don't walk around with a constant feeling of anxiety, of dread, waiting for the next request, and of exhaustion or resentment. And I imagine a lot of you are resonating with this. I know I have a deep-rooted habit of being a people pleaser. It is so important to become aware of this pattern so that you can begin to break it. So how do you break the habit of being a people pleaser? The first thing that you wanna do to break the habit is to create space or a pause before you make the same habitual choice. And what this can look like, and as I started breaking my own habit, I noticed that I would near immediately agree to any plan that anyone offered before checking in with myself. So this creating space can look as simple as pausing before you say yes, taking a moment to actually honestly reflect on where you're at 
on where your energy is, on whether it's possible, on how you feel about the request itself. So this might mean taking an extra minute to get back to the person, delaying your text response or the phone call so that you can check in and say, how do I feel? Which might mean your communication back to the person who made the request is as simple as, I need a moment to think about it. I'll get back to you on that. Now remember, this is a practice. Even taking that immediate step to pause and create space will probably be uncomfortable for a lot of you. So remember to be kind and patient with yourself along the way. The second step, once you've paused, you want to begin to create or to set new boundaries or limits for yourself. Boundaries and limits are really difficult for people pleasers. So this is not going to be easy, largely because we didn't learn boundaries in our childhood. But boundaries or limits are how we get to break free of this pattern. So for example, right, let's say your mom calls you pretty often or a friend, someone calls you pretty often complaining about things, whatever's going on in their life, whatever say is going on with your dad. And you begin to realize that you notice yourself feeling really anxious when you see that person's name, mom, on your, on your call list. And then after the conversation, you might notice that that anxiety continues throughout the day, once the conversation is over, now you're worried about what's happening between mom and dad. You might notice in some moments that even though you wanna be supportive and there for your mom or the friend or whomever it is, you might notice that energetically, emotionally, you might not always be available in the moments where they need you, especially if this is someone who's calling you near constantly. So you might begin to then set a boundary or a limit where you're able to communicate to this person Mom, whoever it is, you might say something as simple as, I understand that you're having issues with dad, with work, with whatever. And at the same time, I also know it's really not my place. I cannot. It's too much for me. Again, whatever language resonates with you, it is not my place. I cannot support you in these moments. I have too much going on myself. These things upset me to hear, right? Whatever is the truth for you. And then here's your boundary. You may still call mom in those moments where you need me or friend or whomever, and my boundary will be in place that if in those moments I'm not available, I might communicate my lack of availability, and I will call you or get back to you when I can, when I do have the space, when I do have the emotional bandwidth to hear. That's what a boundary is, to be clear. It's not us asking mom or dad or whomever not to call anymore. It's us shifting our relationship, setting our limit regardless of if they keep calling or if they don't keep calling. Now, this is a really great example, a really difficult one, but of these small ways that we can begin to honor our own needs, even if the person doesn't understand, even if they get defensive, even if they don't like our new boundary, we can set it for ourselves, stand in our boundary, communicating to ourselves that our needs matter, even if this person can't honor our needs or our boundaries or our limit in that moment, And over time, the more we practice breaking the habit, creating space, setting a boundary, the more we'll be able to rebuild our confidence and ultimately our trust in ourselves. The third step, once we've paused to create space, once we began to set some new boundaries for ourselves, we then want to begin the journey of learning how to self-soothe or to calm our upset, our disappointment, our worry, our fear, whatever on is going on inside of us or inside of our body, our stress or anxiety, we need to teach ourselves how to be with it. Those habitual reactions often come when we can't tolerate how we feel. So we go right into pleasing mode to avoid the discomfort of possibly disappointing someone that we love. So ultimately we end up people pleasing someone else to avoid feeling guilty, feeling shameful, feeling like a quote unquote bad person, for letting someone else down. As an adult, for me included, it has been so important to understand and to learn that it is okay to let someone else down or to disappoint someone else. Disappointing people is part of the human experience. We can't always, even if we want to be present to someone else and help support them, we don't always have the ability or the emotional bandwidth or the energy to do it. We cannot be everything to everyone And we will disappoint even those that we love the most. 
This is part of being human. And again, as you practice, we will learn more and more ways to be with the anxiety, the anger, the guilt, everything we felt that has created the habit of pleasing to avoid it. We will learn how to expand our ability, our capacity to be with those emotions. So really practically, self-soothing can look like going for a walk moving your body, your arms, your legs in whatever is, ways are available to you. It might look like journaling, getting out into words, all everything that you're feeling. It might look like tucking yourself into a cozy spot on your couch and just giving yourself a moment to be, to relax, to feel safe. Maybe if you're like me, I know I find a lot of soothing in doing something creative and taking my paints out and getting immersed and painting a picture without judging what it looks like, or going and spending time in nature, going for a hike. These are moments where I'm able to just be present to whatever is there without becoming overwhelmed or consumed by whatever is there. And ultimately, I end up feeling more grounded, more connected to how I'm feeling, and my mind and body over time are able to calm and to become more grounded as a result. So practically, self-soothing can look like going for a walk, moving your arms, your legs, your body in whatever way is accessible. It can even look like journaling, getting out onto paper, everything that you're thinking, everything that you're feeling. It might look like just cozying up, wrapping a blanket around you and finding a safe place on your couch just to, to be in comfort for a minute. Or maybe you have a friend you can call and just ask if they can just listen while you vent or you get out how it is that you're feeling. If you're like me, I know anytime I bring out something creative, like my paints, or anytime I bring myself into nature, like going on a hike, those are moments where I'm better able to be out of my head, all of the stories about what's happening, and into my body, where I'm able to be present to whatever upsetting emotion is happening, and at the same time, I'm able to do so in a, in a way that helps me feel grounded, helps me feel safe, and ultimately will help me feel calm on the other side of it as opposed to more upset because I was so stuck in my mind. A really helpful affirmation that some of us can use in these moments to remind ourselves. We can even repeat aloud, I am safe to disappoint people. I cannot be everything to everyone. I take care of me. You might wanna write those down, write all three. Pick the one you resonate with worse, write your own, and use these as a verbal reminder. Even though you might not feel that's true in the moment, your mind might be telling you it's not safe to disappoint someone. You have to be everything to everyone. You are not on your priority list. You don't matter. Repeating these new thoughts over time as you are in action, creating the space that you need, the boundaries that you need, tending to your emotions in the way that you need, over time, you will begin to believe these affirmations is true. Some of you might want to write it down. I know for me, when I find an affirmation really resonating, I save it as a background on my phone. So every time I click my phone on, I'm reminded of that new mantra, that new thought. Put in a place you can see it and practice these reminders, especially in these moments where your mind and body are telling you otherwise. As you're beginning to break what for many of you is a lifelong habit of people-pleasing behaviors. I've spent so many decades of my life stuck in this pattern of people pleasing. So I hope all of you people pleasers out there have found this video helpful. And as always, I would love to hear from you. What are the different ways that people pleasing has impacted your life so far? And what are you beginning to notice is shifting and it's changing as you begin to break this habit for yourself? Leave it in the comments below.